Hello everyone and welcome to another preamble video. This one is on position and motion. Originally I was going to do three videos, one each on 1D, 2D and 3D motion, but essentially position and motion in 2 and 3D is the same as 1D with the additional axes. Let me explain. Let's start with 1D motion or position and motion. 1D is simply position and or motion in one direction, so along a straight line. Because if you add any other direction, it will cease to be 1D. So let's suppose that there is this object here at the starting point. Let's call that object A. And at some point T0, this object is at some uh, location X0 and traveling with velocity V0. And at some other time, T, this object has moved to a new location X with some velocity V. Now what we have to do, the idea here is to link this set of variables with this set of variables. So the second with the first. In addition to that we have to be able to link uh, the four important variables of position and motion, namely distance or position velocity, acceleration, and time. When we have done that, we will have produced the four vital equations for position and motion in 1D. And then I'll go on to 3D, 2D and 3D as well. Let's begin. You notice here that the distance traveled by this object is basically the distance between those two points. Call that S. S is equal to X minus X naught. If we suppose that our x0 is actually at 0, then this will simply become x minus 0 or x. I'll come back to this. I'll tell you when this is important. What is velocity? Velocity is the change in position over time. Here, change in position is simply the distance traveled. So this is equal to s over t, which suppose that x0 is not 0. Suppose that x0 is some other point, not equal to 0. Then v will be equal to x minus x0 over t. If x0, as I've said, is equal to 0, then v is simply x over t. Let's carry on with the simpler case that x0 is equal to 0. That means at, an, at the initial point uh, x0, the object is at the origin of 0. What we have calculated here, in fact, is the average velocity. Because velocity at any instant may be different than the average velocity. And this here is our first primary, first of four primary equations. We shall go on to take this equation and manipulate it because here I can write this equation as basically x is equal to v bar t. So the position is the time multiplied by the average velocity. But what is the average velocity? What is v bar? If we go back to the rule of averages, v bar is simply equal to v naught plus v divided by 2. So the initial and final velocities divided by 2. We can put this, substitute this into there and what we will get is x is equal to v naught plus v over 2 multiplied by t. I'll come back to this equation again but it's important to remember that we can write x in two different forms. Hold on to that thought for a minute. What we have here also is acceleration. We know that acceleration or average acceleration is a change of velocity over time. And here it's nothing but the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by t. We can also write this as the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity 
plus the acceleration multiplied by time. Remember, acceleration is average, but we don't generally state that because it is implied. And this is our second of four primary equations. Now what we can do is we can input this equation, substitute this part, the right-hand side, into here, and manipulate this equation to get yet another equation. So let's let's do that here. So what we will have is x, what we had before that is, x was equal to v naught plus v over 2 multiplied by t. But what we're going to input in this here is that v is equal to v naught plus a t. So essentially what we have here is x is equal to, remember that v naught stays, plus v is equal to another v naught plus a t over 2, which is 2 v naught plus a t, or sorry, I forgot the multiplication of t here, over 2 multiplied by t. And if you solve this, this is equal to basically x is equal to v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. And this is our third of four primary equations. Now, remember that I said hold on to this thought over here. x equal to v bar t. If I go forward, using that same equation, x is equal to v bar t. Now we need to understand what is t. So, from the acceleration, velo acceleration and velocity equation, we can <laughs> reduce or transfer the equation to another form that will give us uh, the t. So, acceleration was equal to v minus v naught over t. So, now we can say that t is equal to v minus v naught over a. And we'll input that over here. And what we're going to do is also switch for v bar from before. So x is equal to v bar which was v naught plus v over 2 and then t from here is v minus v naught over a. And from the mathematical identity you know that a plus b multiplied by a minus b is a squared minus b squared. So this is equal to v squared minus v naught squared over 2a. And then we simplify this. This comes out to be v squared is equal to v naught squared plus twice acceleration multiplied by the position. And that is our fourth and final principal equation for position and motion in 1D. So what's the difference between 1, 2, and 3D? Well, 1D is simply position and motion in a straight line. Let's call it x. 2D is two-dimensional. So we have the intersection of two axes. Call them x and y. As you can see, well, let me write that down here. 1D is in the line or on the line. The intersection of two axes gives you a plane. So 2D motion and position is on a plane. 3D is three axes. One, two, and three. Call it X, Y, and Z. So three axes gives you space. So 3D is position and motion in space. So here in 1D we only have the one coordinate to understand x. Here we have x and y. And in 3D we have x, y, and z. So if we were to utilize the previous four equations in 1, 2, from 1D to 2 and 3D, they would stay exactly the same, except you're going to have to consider for 2D both velocity, acceleration, and position for y as well and for 3d all four principal equations 
will have to be considered for all three coordinate systems. So for example, let's just suppose I write the fourth one, which was v squared is equal to v naught squared plus 2ax. x here is an x because this was in 1D only. If, however, I have to, if I, conver if I wanted to convert this into a 3D, what I would have to do is write down v p or v squared um, actually it would actually be v p squared plus v p naught squared or sorry equal to v p naught squared plus 2 a p where p can be x y or z so for instance in the z direction we have v z squared so the final velocity in the z direction is equal to the initial velocity in the z direction vz naught plus twice the acceleration in the z direction I forgot that subscript and multiplied by the position in z direction itself as you can see this is fairly intuitive all you have to do is wherever there were no subscripts you have to add them if there are constants keep them and if there is position substitute a const or a variable for position as a whole where that variable can take on x y z for 3d or just x and y for 2d converting from 1 to 2 to 3 is easy in theory in practice it takes a fair bit of exercise and a fair bit of uh, man manip careful manipulation without hurry so be careful when you're manip manipulating these equations i hope you've had fun enjoying uh, watching this video as much as i have narrating it. Thank you. Bye-bye.